What could be better than a Wi-Fi controlled relay? Two Wi-Fi controlled relays. But that's the Sonoff Dual. I already did a video about that. What could be better than two Wi-Fi controlled relays? Four Wi-Fi controlled relays. Let's check out the Sonoff 4 channel. The 4 channel Sonoff comes in two different models, the Pro and the not so Pro. And actually, each of those models has an R2 version and a not R2 version. So there are really four different four channel Sonoff devices. That means potentially four different methods for flashing. Fear not, I will do my best to cover them all. Fortunately, all of these models look very different on the outside. So you don't even have to take it apart to know what model you have. That's nice. The first one we're gonna look at is the original non-pro, non-R2 four channel Sonoff. The first thing that struck me was how deep these screw holes are. You need a really long, really skinny screwdriver to get them out. Now let's take a look at the board. There are three banks of connectors. One for the neutrals, one for the hot wires. The third is either for ground or for those crazy countries who let people mess around with 240 volts. In that case, it's for the other hot. The labeling on the serial pins for the four channel Sonoff were incorrect. Every Sonoff device should have the serial pins in the same order. It goes three volts, RX, TX, then ground. On this board, they also labeled GPIO zero and it's connected to a button. So that's gonna make putting it in programming mode super easy. We'll do that in just a second. Let's talk about the Tasmoda setup for a minute. If you're wondering why I wanna change the firmware to Tasmoda, click that link up there for a video where I explain my reasons. I've tried multiple times to establish a standard way to flash Tasmoda, something that would be simple, reliable, and repeatable. But these things are constantly changing. Tasmoda is always changing, the Arduino libraries are always changing, the board managers are always changing. It seems like every time I put out a video that says, this is how you flash Tasmoda, it's wrong or outdated very quickly. Nevertheless, here it is again, my recommended method for flashing anything Sonoff. First thing you wanna do is follow this link. It'll take you to the ESP Easy website where you can download a zip file. Inside that zip file, you'll find a bunch of versions of ESP Easy, which is great. And also a file called flash esp8266.exe. That's the file that I also like to call flash easy. Next, go to the Tasmoda GitHub page and grab one of the sonoff.bin files for whichever version of Tasmoda you decide you wanna use. Save that file into the folder where flash esp8266.exe lives. By using that sonoff.bin file, you don't have to mess with the Arduino IDE at all, which means you don't need to mess with libraries or board managers or tool settings or anything else. It does mean that there's gonna be a couple extra setup steps after you get it flashed, but those extra setup steps are probably worth your time to avoid a lot of the variables that keep changing and causing a lot of us big headaches. Now some Sonoffs, including the four channels, use the 8285 chip instead of the 8266 chip. As far as I could find out, the only difference is that the 8285 chip has the one megabyte of flash built into the chip. So there's no reason why you can't just use the binary files that you can download from the Tasmoda GitHub page. Once we've got the binary file, we can get the four channel into programming mode by connecting our FTDI adapter, holding down GPIO zero, which is this first button, and then connecting our FTDI adapter to our USB port. Then open Flash Easy, select the port and sonoff.bin, click flash and pray. Once you've successfully flashed, you need to connect to the Wi-Fi that the Sonoff creates. The first step is to press the GPIO zero button four times pretty quickly. When the LED starts to flash, you know that it's broadcasting. Now go to some sort of Wi-Fi device, like your phone or your laptop, and look for the Sonoff SSID. Connect to that and you'll be able to put in your home Wi-Fi SSID and password. Sometimes you have to power down the board and power it back up again before it'll connect to your Wi-Fi. Now you have to find the IP address of the Sonoff, either by looking in your router or something like Fing. Put that IP address in your browser and it'll open up Tasmoda main page. In the Tasmoda main page, go to configuration, configure module, and set the module type to four channel. Save and restart. Now on the Tasmoda main page, 
You've got four buttons that control the four relays on the board. Awesome. Next, let's input your MQTT broker information. Host is the IP address, and then a user and password if you have one. Once that information's in, save and restart again. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say MQTT, there's a video for you. Sorry to have to repeat that again. I feel like I've said the same thing like 10 times in 10 different videos. With new people watching all the time, it's hard to know what to repeat and what not to repeat. That's all you have to do to get the four channel flashed. Now I wanna show you something really cool that you can do starting with version 5.12 of Tasmoda, and that is Home Assistant Discovery. What this will do was allow the device, in this case, our new four channel Sonoff, to add itself to Home Assistant as a switch, and that'll include all four switches. That means we don't have to go into our configuration.yaml file and manually add entries for switches for each of the relays. That's fantastic. To make that happen, go into the console and type set option 19 one and hit enter. You will need to restart Home Assistant for the switches to be added. But once you do, bingo, there they are. Interestingly, when you add switches this way, they don't get added to your configuration.yaml file. In fact, I couldn't find exactly where they get added. And if you disconnect the switches later, they'll still be there, but they'll say unavailable. I don't know all the details of this discovery function, but it is a pretty cool way to not have to edit your config.yaml file when you add new tasmatized devices. That's it for the non-pro, non-R2. It really is just the Wi-Fi chip and four relays and four buttons. You can put one power source in and switch four lines out. I don't have a non-pro R2 version, and I couldn't find any images online of the board. So if you have a non-pro R2 and you're having trouble getting it flashed, post a link to some images and I bet we could figure out how to get it done. Now on to the pro. The pro is quite a bit different than the non-pro. To start with, it has very different wire connections. The pro can be powered by AC or DC, and each relay is separated from the power that's coming into the unit, meaning each relay can switch a different circuit, completely independent of the power that's going to the ESP chip. So you could switch a combination of high and low voltage circuits. Also, the relays have a normally open and a normally closed contact. That's similar to what you would find on an independent relay like this. On the non-pro, all the relays are connected as normally open, which is similar to the way they're connected on the Sonoff Basic. The Pro also has a second microprocessor. I don't know much about it other than that it's there. One more difference between the Pro and the non-pro, and it might be the most important difference. The Pro includes RF capabilities. There isn't anything we can do with that RF function right now because we need to have an RF bridge. But fortunately, the next project is the Flash the Sonoff RF bridge. On the Pro, GPIO0 is not connected to the button like it was on the non-Pro. But fortunately, we know where to find GPIO0 on these chips. Remember when we flashed the Sonoff Touch? GPIO0 is the second contact point from the right on the opposite side as the antenna, right here. If you have the non-R2 Pro, you can put GPIO0 to ground with a jumper going from ground to this second contact point from the corner right here. Now I also have the Pro R2 and GPIO0 is in a different place on that board. So that's four models and three confirmed different locations for GPIO0. Thanks, it -ed. This is where GPIO0 is on the Pro R2. Steps are pretty much the same. Connect the FTDI adapter to your serial pins, hold a jumper from ground to the GPIO0 contact, then plug your FTDI adapter into your computer. The Pro takes a little longer to boot up, so you'll have to hold the GPIO0 jumper for a few seconds before you get it into programming mode. Once it's in programming mode, follow the same process as we did with the non-Pro. Start flash easy, select your bin, and flash away. Now because GPIO0 on the Pro is not connected to a button, it can be pretty tricky to get the board to broadcast its Wi-Fi. In fact, I couldn't do it. I tried putting GPIO0 to ground multiple times rapidly, but I never got it to broadcast the Wi-Fi. So either I did something wrong or there's some other reason why it didn't work. Fortunately, there's another way to communicate with your newly tasmatized Sonoff. If you want the full explanation of how this works, check out this video by Vicious. He's the only reason that I even know about this method. Essentially, you use a program called Termite to communicate with your Sonoff through the serial pins. So while it's still connected to your computer, 
with your FTDI adapter. You can type in commands to set your Wi-Fi SSID and password, MQTT information, and you can even start the Home Assistant Discovery this way with set option 19.1. Again, I'll leave the details of explaining it to Vicious, but you can bet that you'll see me using this method in the future. Thanks, Vicious. The relays on the Pro can operate in three different modes, interlocking, self-locking, or inching. If this switch is set to the zero position, then all of the relays will be in interlock mode, meaning only one relay can be on at a time. If you change that switch to the one position, then all of the relays will be either self-locking or inching. So when the big switch is in the one position, then this bank of four tiny switches determines whether each relay is in inching or self-locking mode. Switch one controls relay one, switch two controls relay two, and so on. So if the big switch is on the one and tiny switch number one is set to one, then relay number one will be in self-locking mode. Self-locking means that the relay will operate independent of any of the other relays. It can be on or off regardless of the state of the other relays. If tiny switch number one is set to zero, then relay number one will be in inching mode. Inching mode means that the relay will be activated, but then deactivated after a set period of time. On the R2, that time delay can be anywhere from one to 16 seconds. This other bank of four tiny switches is what determines that time delay. There are four switches with two possible positions. That means a total of 16 potential combinations. Each different combination corresponds to a different time delay. There's a key printed on the back of the board that will tell you what all the different switch positions do, including how to set the time delay. Also, ITED has a decent explanation on their website. There's not a lot of words, but there are some pretty pictures. So the four channel Sonoff is pretty cool, but it's not the only way to control multiple relays. Just for kicks, I set up a D1 Mini and connected four relays and four push buttons. I call it the Hydra. I think I exceeded the maximum current output for the D1 Mini though, because when I activated all the relays and all the switches, it started acting all crazy. I could control the relays fine from the web UI, but when I tried to use the touch buttons, some of them worked and some of them didn't. So if you do this, you may not want to use powered buttons. You can also create your own four channel Sonoff from a Sonoff SV. Those of you that came early to the Maker Faire probably met Tyson. He used an SV and three relays to run his sprinkler system. Genius. I tried doing the same thing with a Sonoff Basic and I fried two of them in my attempts. I'm not saying it's impossible, but if you don't have Sonoffs to spare, you might not want to try it. I think the problem comes from the current requirement for the relay. These GPIO pins have a maximum output of 12 milliamps. So what most relays require is a secondary power source besides the GPIO pin. The Sonoff Basic can't supply that extra power, so you need a secondary source. And adding a second power supply kind of defeats the whole purpose of using a Sonoff Basic in the first place. So that's it, the Sonoff four channel, all four of them. But if you've got one and you've just been waiting to flash it with Tasmoto so you could use it with Home Assistant, now you can. Here we are again at the end. If you want to know what I'm doing next, if you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, if you need more help than I can provide, and if you want to go to just one place for all this stuff, well, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.